leader. Request landing instructions. Flight of four Super Sabres. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, Thunderbird leader. Use runway 02. Winds light and variable. Altimeter setting 29er. 9er 2. Over. Roger, Nellis Tire. Request permission for a low pass over the field. Go ahead. Permission granted. Welcome home, Thunderbirds. You never quite get used to the contrast, do you, Saber? Here you're parked in your home barn. Here it's quiet, snug, and restful. At this moment, you and F-100 are just a static hunk of metal, as are your teammates surrounding you. What a difference from your active life in the air. In your element, when you and your mates take your place in the sun, you are the Thunderbirds. Unite the air like the Super Sabres you are. 10,000 pounds of thrust pouring from each of your tailpipes. You climb in graceful loops. Skim the ground like banshees on the warpath. Turn and twist, rise and fall. Your skins are hot, then cold. It's wonderful, this life in the sky. And while you ride the air, the people below look and applaud. Like these Guatemalans. Just one of the many foreign groups that have watched the Thunderbirds perform. Then, all too soon it seems, the men who fly you bring you down. Another show is over. Sometimes like frisky colts you don't want to stop moving. Then the reins are hauled back and a chute, like a restraining sea anchor, brings you up short. Yes, Sabre, while you like it best in the air, you also have to admit that you like the admiration of people. Especially the kids. And once in a while, Robbie, that's the lead pilot, lets one of the kids climb up and peek into his cockpit. Boy, you should watch that kid. He's out of this world in a supersonic no time at all. But you're not together now, are you, Sabre? Now, in this closed hangar, you're alone with only a cat for company. It's hard for you to realize that you're only a machine, while the pilots who fly you are human and need to relax, to do the little things that mean so much to a man. Right now, your slot man Sam is doing some fancy teamwork in his own backyard. And Doug, after showing off his baby's picture for weeks, he's now handling the real article. And that Bart, lugging a box ever since he left Chicago. Wonder what's in that box? Whatever it is, it better be four of a kind. And Robbie, he was the guy who was going to relax and have himself a ball. He's having a ball, all right. It's morning, and things are beginning to stir. Sabres, time for action station. Hey, Sarge, forget all that poking and prodding. Never mind the rub down either. Sabre says he's fine in the pink. It's hard to imagine why anyone bothers talking to this guy. Never pays any attention. His only concern is keeping the planes flying, which I guess is the way it should be. Incidentally, to give you an idea of the caliber of this kind of maintenance, not one show in over 400 has been canceled due to mechanical trouble. Couldn't find a better day for it, could you, Robbie? Ceiling unlimited, visibility unlimited, a few clouds to play around in. That's right, give them a full load of that JP4 juice. They got a lot of flying to do. It may be of interest to know that even after months and months of arduous training and practice, the men always get together for a final briefing before going into the air. And when they're satisfied, it's only then that it's every man to his plane.
this little corner of America over which the Thunderbirds will fly today is half raw nature and half a monument to man's mastery over his environment. This is the country of the Grand Canyon, Death Valley, Mount Whitney. Here also is Hoover Dam and the vast man-made body of water backed up behind him, Lake Mead. This is a land of contrasts. This isn't a regular demonstration being flown today. It's a practice session to see if the Thunderbirds can better some of their maneuvers. They do this once or twice a day for practically 365 days a year. Nothing new has been added. It's just the idea that practice still makes perfect. We'll start right off with a bang. I should say boom, sonic boom. like that. This desert floor has heard louder booms than this, I can tell you. Actually, the Thunderbirds only produce sonic booms on special occasions and over areas declared safe and clear. Now that we've proven the Thunderbirds can operate faster than sound, watch them make a cloverleaf turn. Up they go on a power climb. Up and up changing over, then over the top, rolling 90 degrees, floating across the top. And down the back side, and then playing the deck. the Thunderbirds do another maneuver, I want to point something out. Notice how close together they are when they move into a diamond formation. This is a real tight maneuver. Actually, their wingtips overlap three feet and are separated vertically by a scant five feet, only boomstick clearance. So you will know how the Thunderbirds achieve this precision. I'm going to let you in on one of their trade secrets. Pilots do it by watching the lead plane. It's aerial follow the leader, that's what it is. Watch how this works when they do a roll. Here they come in a diamond formation. Now the lead plane's left wing drops. The others follow suit. They're over on their backs and on around still maintaining the diamond. But while the Thunderbirds take most of their cues from watching each other, they don't operate in dead silence. The leader talks his men into a feel for the maneuver they're performing. It's like a director coaching his players. Listen to Robbie on the next couple of maneuvers. Okay, Thunderbirds, let's do a loop. We'll play the deck. Nose coming up. Okay, and with the pull.
vertical 360 degree turn. Object here is to turn in a tight circle within a radius of half a mile at 600 miles per hour. It's like a dog chasing his tail. It may not look it, but this is one of the hardest maneuvers the Thunderbirds perform. G-forces four or five times normal are exerted on the men. If, for example, a man weighs 200 pounds in this turn, he's pressed up against his seat as if he weighed 1,000 pounds. The tighter the turn, the more the G-force. head-on at speeds up to 600 miles per hour or at a closing rate of 1,200 miles per hour. I'm coming back on the power. I'm right with you, Robbie. You're riding a little low, Sam. Okay, Chief. Going up to your level. the Dugs, the Sams and Barts. It's the men of the Air Force that add up to the big deterrent effect we have on any would-be aggressor. Sabre, I and all of America salute the men who fly you and your kind. 